you've got no money and you really want to be in Robot Wars, take heart from this next team. This is 101, and this robot costs between, wait for it, 75 pence and a pound to build. Is that really, really true? Yeah, something like that. Everything was scrounged. Everything was scrounged. From North Hampshire, 101. Perhaps the name comes from the fact it costs around 101 pence to build most of the parts donated, like the CO2 powered ramming spike, the HE30 alloy body shell, the weapons capable of punching through steel plates. Hi, I'm Mike. This is Paul and Amy. This is our robot 101. It'll run either way up on the tracks. It's got a very complicated weapon system that automatically fires when another robot comes in front. Bang. Robot ears, stand by. There's the overkill team from Somerset then. With James Yule and Lawrence Burke at the controls up there in the cherry picker and 101. Three. Mike Franklin, two, Paul Johnson and young Amy one, in the middle. Immediately, it's overkill, trying to get underneath 101, as Lawrence Burke said they might try to do, the older Lawrence that is, the team captain. Thing is, 101 has a fairly low ground clearance, it is riding piggyback up on overkill, the tank track spinning furiously to get it away from the dreaded pit, look at this. A great shove here by Overkill towards the pit and just turning away in time. And now Overkill. Has it uh, gone into overdrive, I wonder, and burned itself out? What's happening here? Not a great deal of movement from Overkill. And this is dead metal. And the spinning blade slicing into the bodywork of Overkill. And I think they've got problems here. I think the Burke family... And 16-year-old James Yule have got worries. I don't think they can get out from the arena wall or dead metal. 101 has a little prod, a little tentative look to see what's going on, and they're away now. Out go Overkill, back into the main arena floor, away from the corner patrol zone. And 101 coming in with a side slam there, 101. Overkill equal to that. One or two slight scratches and smudges to the paintwork. Otherwise, overkill, undamaged, just like 101. This is a, a very tight clash. Oh, goodness me, I thought they were going to drive themselves into the pit there. James Yule and 14-year-old Lawrence Burke, who builds radio-controlled cars in his spare time and wants to be a movie star. Driving in now, overkill, underneath 101 towards Killalot. But look, no purchase of the Lance there. On the body shell of 101, Again, the tank track simply threw off Killalot's lance, and we haven't seen that too often in Robot Wars. The nemesis of so many competitors, the great Killalot. There's young Amy in the middle with the mascot. Mike Franklin at the controls. Overkill, again, has these ponderous spells. Statues, what's that on the arena floor? Something's come off the bottom of Overkill. They're like a plate of some sort, but they're in trouble now. Killalot and Bash in there. Overkill flipped up by Killalot, and that's the end, surely. Flipped over. Well, it was a worthy old battle, and they know the end has come now. And it's merely a question of damage Six. control. That was a good fight. 101, the victors. They go through. It's got a, a rangefinder on it, so you just drive up to the robot, and as soon as it sees another robot, bang, it fires. So you don't have to worry about firing a weapon, you just it fires itself. Kill. How sophisticated is that? And you didn't tell us about that, so why didn't it work in there? I don't know, probably a wire come off or something. Oh. So we're hoping to see it for the next bout, because you're through anyway. That's fine, yeah? Yeah. Amy, you've got something to celebrate on your birthday, haven't you? Did you think it was going to be that good? No. No. It was easy, wasn't it? Yeah. You're proud of your dad? Are you nervous, Dad? Very. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. What do you think uh, of Centurion, who you're facing oh, up to? Quite a mean-looking uh, animal, I think. Yeah. It was a magnificent first round for Centurion. Any tactics? No, just hit it. Okay. Just Keep out of here. Any tactics? Any ideas of what you can do? Run away or fight? Which one? Run away. Run away. <laughs> oh, bless your heart. All right.
two nice teams. Nice, nice. Come on, this is Robot Wars we want. Mashing up and mayhem here from these two teams. Centurion with the Action 101. A trundler. Robot ears, stand by. Three, two, one. The Tates against the Franklins then, and 101 first to move. I've been down in the pits, you know, and had a look at those tracks. Couldn't understand why it had so much purchase on the arena floor. Screws stick out of those tank traps to dig into the arena floor, and it's Centurion doing all the work. With the front prongs lifting up 101, slamming it against the arena wall. There's Sergeant Bash, a lick of flame too. A lively start to this second round then. Centurion again using the prongs to get in underneath 101. We've not seen that weapon of 101 yet. A little spike which is said to come into play on contact with an opponent. Well, we haven't seen that yet. Centurion with the, again, eagle showing clearly. Turning away. Like some great First World War tank. Slamming against another here. There is the weapon though of 101. Did you just see it flicking out there like a snake tongue? Didn't cause any damage. There it is, look. Goes back in, 101, off the arena. Spikes using its own spike to nudge in against Centurion. Centurion lifts, throws into the CPZ, so Bash can come in. It's front pincers, also attacking Centurion. And the Tate team, Ray and Matthew Tate. Ray Tate wants to go and work for NASA, the space agency. Well, hardly a performance out of this world for either of these robots so far. Although, it looks as if 101, I thought it was going to come in with a slam there. On the side panel of Centurion, which is stuck, is it, on the arena wall? 101 on the attack. Is Centurion here immobilised? Let's have a look. There you can see the front prodding prong of 101. And still Centurion embedded on the arena wall and can't get away. And I think he's immobilised here. Killalot agrees with me. The eyes are blinking of Centurion, but there's no one upstairs. And they are in real peril now. Kill a lot. Senses, so does Dead Metal. It's all over for Centurion. And the Roman Wars are about to come to an end here. Et to Kill a lot. Eh? Infamy, infamy. They've all got it in for me. The Centurion Six. boys would cry. Oh dear. They're out. Well done, 101. Well, Centurion marches no longer, despite his mighty axe. 101 goes through to the next round. that your weapon started working for this round yeah, and that meant time. you won because you we, just had a we, we wound took straight out, through. Yeah. Took them out somewhere. And Brilliant. that must have just felt fantastic that actually a design paid off. A, a cheap design. Yeah, yeah. was it cheap? <laughs> yeah, it's cheap, really? cheap, yeah. Was it? Pounds, it's quite sophisticated. Well, yeah, but it's cheap. Scrapyard job, you know. Own identity badge. It's very good. We like that. Now, is Bunny going to give me another wave? Yeah, when you're on your way up. OK, because I think that was a good luck thing. I think that worked for you last time. Do you think it's going to work this time, bunny waving? It better do. <laughs> we want revenge. You want revenge? We want revenge, because they beat us last time with Robodon. Oh, I remember. Yes, the 101 team were represented by Robodoc in the last wars, and King Buxton beat them. Driving in underneath Robodoc. Time and time again. But the Jutters have gone for King Buxton! And it didn't go down too well. High praise from King Buxton. How much of the victory so far taken out of that robot? Simon Harrison at the controls the with Phil Brett. Is. And Stand 101. Three, and Mike Franklin, two, and Amy Franklin. One. Activate. The little mascot tight in her grip. Steady start, dancing around one another. 101 in underneath King Buxton, two very, very similar looking robots. King Buxton the speedier, 101 slightly the heavier and taller in height and driving up on the top there of King Buxton. Look at this now. Boom, up and over. But 
has those great tank tracks with the screws embedded. They cause damage, not just to opponents, but to the arena floor, let me tell you. Spike comes out of the arena floor. 101 onto the arena wall. What damage has been sustained by those front prongs on King Buxton? 101 turns to come in with a side slam, perhaps. Dodging manoeuvre by King Buxton, takes it back onto the arena wall. You can just see then the prong coming flicking out from the front of 101. It stayed out there again. Said to come into play on contact with an opponent. And it's King Buxton on the very fringe of a CPZ and also the flame pit, the barbecue, and there the circular saws on the arena wall. Taking damage themselves, and I think put out of play the circular saw there. A slam by King Buxton onto the arena wall. Now, thinking about an attack, needs to get away from dead metal. Turns, manoeuvres, dodging. Trying to stay out of trouble. Now on the attack itself. That's a good push by King Buxton. 101 swivels. Great purchase here. Maneuverability. 101. Highly praised by King Buxton. King Buxton with that victory, of course, against Robo Doc in the last series that went down so badly. Paul Johnson, part of the 101 team, built Robo Doc. 101 up and over again. Again, no. Terrific damage sustained. Look at the power of 101. The circular blade on the back of King Buxton causing no trouble at all. There's the camera on top of Shunt. He tries to get his own axe into play. And could well here now have King Buxton at his mercy. Bang! On the top of King Buxton. The shovel lifts and flicks King Buxton into the air. Bounces away. Again, Buxton on the attack. 101 dives in underneath. Very, very close this so far. Good old tussle, isn't it? Good control and technique. Style. Not a great deal of damage sustained. I'd say probably more to King Buxton at this stage. Aggression, not a lot between the two of them. King Buxton riding high. Look at the smoke coming away from the wheels. Now, pensive. Is that smoke from the wheels, or is it graver than I thought there? No, it could just be exhaust smoke from King Buxton. We'll wait and see. Or is it? Are they ground themselves to a halt here? This looks as if they've gripped together in some grisly dance of doom. Slower and slower and slower as time ticks down. It'll go to the judges. They've worn themselves stand still. Well, that was far too close to call. Two robots evenly matched. We're going to have to go for a decision from the judges. While they're making a decision, let's look at some of the highlights from that fantastic battle. There, the early drive from 101 up over the top of King Buxton. The slam against the arena circular source. Some damage was certainly sustained by King Buxton there. And came dead metal briefly. That's a good attack, though, by Buxton on the side wall of 101. Again, the push and shove. But by the end, they had nothing left to give. The judges have made their decision. It's unanimous. That surprised me. But they've gone for 101. Can you believe it? You're through to the series semi-final. Well, that was for RoboDot. The revenge was sweet, was it? Revenge was very sweet. So how do you feel you're going to do in the series semis? Well, if I can get it fixed, we've got in with a chance. So. It was a hard-fought battle, it that was one, wasn't it? It was a very hard-fought battle. It's a robot everywhere. <laughs> Give it up for 101! From North Hampshire, 101. The CO2 powered ramming spike will pierce one eighth inch steel plate. The tracks come from an old bottle washing machine. Screws sticking through the tracks will give more purchase and ruin our arena floor. Hi, I'm Mike. 
This is Paul and Amy. This is our Robot 101. It'll run either way up on the tracks. It's got a very complicated weapon system that automatically fires when another robot comes in front. Bang. Don't mess with Philippa laying down the law there for Darren Ball on the right-hand side with the controls. Robot ears, stand by. Against the 101 machine. Of Mike and Amy Franklin. This, the first Three, of the battles in two, this second semi-final. One, activate. It's 101 moving away from the early charge of Scottish events to come in and up and over almost that front bulldozer blade. Great strength from Scudder's Revenge. Don't forget, that's its main weapon, and 101 pushing to the CPZ. And very nearly under the hammer blow there of Shunt. 101, great traction and spinning, and embedded in those tracks are the screws, which don't do us any favours on the arena floor, I can tell you. Scudder's Revenge here looks mean and menacing. Well protected also by that aluminium body shell, but Mike Franklin, the controls of 101, trying to get in behind Scudder's Revenge. Perhaps the detect detects a, an Achilles heel there somewhere. And of course, we want to get his own pneumatic spike into play. Should come into play when it detects another robot near, but we haven't really seen that, to be honest. Well, this again developing into something of a war of attrition here. 101, 79 and a half kilos, slightly the heavier than the Scudder's Revenge boys and their machine. Scudder's Revenge, digging in. Extra traction from its aluminium mono chassis design tracks, but I'm not too sure whether there's any life in Scudder's Revenge to move forward. I'm, I think Scudder's Revenge here is in trouble. It's dug itself deep under the arena floor, yes, to get traction, but it can't move and shunt, as you can see, causing all sorts of damage now. I don't know about you, but I think Scudder's Revenge is finished here now. 101 slamming it on the side. It must be because the house robots have detected that Scudder's Revenge is finished, so they can come in now for the kill. There's Killer Lot and Matilda at the bottom of your picture. Now to bring in the big oh, chainsaw and Killer Lot said, no, 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 this baby's mine. I want Scutter's Revenge. Let me finish off Scutter's Revenge. Cease. It's finished whatever way. 101 the winners with Mike and Amy. Well, just anything called a scutter not to clean up. They've been sent to room 101. 101 go through. That was a fantastic battle. Now, I know you were really, really worried about that, I, weren't I you, I thought I'd lost it. The first three quarters, I couldn't couldn't get into a good position, and uh, there's something died in theirs, and we got lucky. There, the 101 team with Mike and Amy Franklin and the Hypnodisc boys, Dave Rose and Dad Kenneth. Shame that Derek couldn't Robot be here today, the twin brother. By. 101. Heavy. Low centre of gravity and well controlled by Mike and Hypnodisc with Three, the powerful weapon. Two, one, activate. Hypnodisc would be the favourite here at the start of a battle which will see one of these robots into the grand final. Our last seat at the great party is about to be filled by one of these. 101's extra traction on the arena floor because of the screws embedded in the tracks we've been telling you about all series. There, the little front prodding spike as well on 101. The hydraulic ram, if you like. And a worthy weapon, is it? Onto the hypno disc, which spins slowly trying to rotate up to its maximum 600 revs per minute. Backing away, Hypnodisc, under the controls of Dave Rose, who's built and flown radio-controlled aircraft for the last decade. There, though, Mike Franklin at the controls of 101 we saw briefly. 101 pushed towards dead metal into the CPZ. Between a rock and a hard place there. Get out, get out, get out. Well, he has got out. Well done, 101. Hypnodisc spinning quickly. Mike Franklin at the controls of 101. Amy looks pensive, a little bit worried on inside it. With the furry mascot. Uh, no furry mascots there. In fact, no fur on the head of Kenneth whatsoever. Really? Uh, it's Hypnodisc underneath 101. Bouncing. Very close, this. 
semi-final battle here now. Hypno just turning away. Back into the CPZ. Dead Metal has it into his clutches. Bad driving there. Oh, and down comes the circular shore of Dead Metal. Little yellow flag there you can see on the top of Hypno Disc is Derek Rose's security pass into the arena. He's not here in body, he is here in spirit, and perhaps that spirit helped Hypno Disc get away from trouble there. They needed something. A miraculous escape. Now on the attack, Hypno Disc 101 onto the flame pit. Hypno Disc's weapon, you know, throughout this semi final has not been as potent as we thought. Power. Look at this, too. Great robots push against one another. Well, the roses look on as Hypnodisc now tries to get away from Dead Metal for a second time. No great power or revolutions behind that weapon now. Is there something wrong with it, I wonder? The judges look on because it could be they who make the final decision here. Who goes to the grand final? They will have to make a decision because time is running out. The judges will decide whether it's Hypno Disc or 101. Cease. They come to a halt. Significantly side by side. It was that close. Who won? He doesn't know. Neither do I. This is a first on Robot Wars. Not only the judges want to deliberate further, they want to come out and inspect the robots first hand for damage. It's that close then. They have to look for damage. Adam Harper bends down. Expert in electrical engineering, Professor Noel Sharkey from Sheffield University. And Martin Smith, another electrics engineering expert. Who sustained the most damage? Try and give you a few clues, shall we? Well, sparks flying as 101 came in on the attack up and over Hypnodisc. Let's start placing the grand final. It's very, very important. 101's front prodding spike to no great avail. No, neither the blade of Hypnodisc, who took damage from dead metal, having poorly driven into there in the first place. Don't forget, that's bad control. Lucky to get away, in my opinion. On the attack, though, underneath 101. Aggression from Hypnodisc. 101 into the clutches of dead metal. Even Stevens. Still they look on and peer. Is there a dent? Is there a mark, a scratch? I think they've got their decision. We'll have it very shortly. Who's won this one? The tightest battle in Robot Wars history. Mike and Amy look on. And the Rose Boys. Well, I'm being told what their decision is. And they've gone for hypno <laughs> I'm sorry, little Amy. <laughs> Are you upset? I oh, know, but you'll come back next year and try and win again? Maybe. You did very well. We did really well. You got through to the series semi-finals and you did very, very well. Have you got a little poem for me? I heard you're a budding poet. Yes. Can I hear it? Oh, wow, look at this. <laughs> it's called Craig. OK. Craig is a trooper who works all day long. He always gets the cameras wrong. When his favourite robot wins, he grins and grins. He really... What's that say? Likes Amy. He really likes Amy and her bunny. We think he's really funny. He gets his lines wrong again and again, but we like him all the same. Thank you very much. <laughs> well done, Amy. Well done. Come back again next year. I'm sorry for getting my lines wrong. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.